Hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Biorun Babalola. This is another masterclass. Well, this masterclass actually started yesterday, but due to one reason or the other, I guess it was the internet and the internet disconnected. That is one of those things that happens here in this part of the world. After some minutes, about 30 minutes or thereabouts, the internet disconnected. And I tried as much as possible to see how we could fix it, but we couldn't fix it on time. That is why I'm going to, ha to have a repeat of what we have yesterday in this masterclass. So today we serve as the day one of the masterclass instead of that yesterday, and I will do the concluding parts tomorrow by God's grace. And if you're an entrepreneur, always prepare for the eventuality. At any point in time, anything can happen. And that is also the reason why I'm starting this one a little bit late, so that I can have a fear of the network. We don't have control over that in this country, but over time, things will get better. But until things get better, you also need to get better in anything that you're doing. Not mind the challenges that you face, not mind the obstacles that will come your way as an entrepreneur. All you need to do is to keep facing the challenge and try as much as possible to remain flexible in order to overcome the challenge. If you are doing anything worthwhile, there will always be challenges that will face you. But as an entrepreneur, you need to find a way to solve the problem. And that is one of those things that happened yesterday in the course of having this discussion with you and the internet went off. Well, that shouldn't stop us from doing what we are supposed to do. There can be a little delay, but the best thing is you need to forge ahead, move ahead, and don't stop. So, as an entrepreneur, you don't have to stop. In respect of the storm, just keep going. And that's exactly what I am also doing. There are always there, there will always be challenges, no matter what you do, no matter the height that you have had. As much as you are setting a new goal for yourself, as much as you want to break new boundaries, there will always be challenges that will face you. And you need to be strong enough and be energetic enough to overcome those challenges. All you need is the momentum, momentum to move forward and forward. And then you see those fears disappear. So today, we're going to look at what I call how to create a marketing plan for your business as a business owner. I call this one the marketing roadmap. If you're a business owner and then you need to create a channel for yourself, you need to develop a roadmap for your business ahead of this 2021 this is the best time and i'm doing this because in the last few months between october to december i had this opportunity of discussing with a lot of business owners and then in the process what i discovered was most of these business owners don't even have any concrete plan to achieve their objective yes everybody wants to make money the truth is we want to grow our business the reality is we want to move to the next level but you cannot move to the next level we cannot grow the business without developing a path without developing a roadmap without developing the channel that we want to use to develop to also grow our business and in the course of this those ones that i have the opportunity to discuss with i did those ones that i could help and say oh this is how to how to develop a better plan and I share some of my templates with some of them, but I still have other a lot of people that still struggle with this marketing plan because you just feel like, well, in this part of the world, marketing plan may not work, maybe because of what they have tried in the past and it has failed. Well, just because you have a marketing plan does not really guarantee that you are going to have a profitable business, but not having one simply means that your business has no roadmap. That means anywhere you get to at the end of the year is really where you want to get to. Whatever thing that you achieve by end of the year is really what your business stands to achieve. You are not measuring your business against something else. You are not measuring your business against the objective and the goal that you have set for yourself. So creating a marketing plan is one document that will separate you from every other business in your industry. Just imagine if you have a business and you don't know 
the target that you want to meet for each quarter of the year. Even if you don't miss those quarters, you will not even know. And even if you meet those quarters, you will not even know. You are just playing the game as it comes. In 2021, I will encourage you to try new things, just like I try new things every time. I will also encourage you to try new things, create a marketing plan. If you have never created a business plan for your business, then it will be difficult for you to create a marketing plan because a marketing plan is actually a section of your business plan. But perhaps your business plan can just be a one-page business plan. And then you can have your marketing plan as also a one-page marketing plan. Now, everything I'm going to be discussing is not something that is vague. I'm going to be discussing it in practical form so that you can put your hand on it and create your own marketing plan. And if you don't know how to create one after watching this live video or watch the broadcast, I will also share with you a template of marketing plan that you can just add or fill the form and then you have your own marketing plan. So let's get started so that we can do something better today. And I'm going to share my screen with us and explain some of those steps that involved in creating marketing plan. So now, like I said that, like I said that we need, you need to create a marketing plan for your business. And just having a marketing plan is not enough but you need to follow through on your marketing plan but the first stage is to have your own marketing plan so now i call this the roadmap to marketing plan marketing roadmap of, for business owners and this is one thing that you need to do in order for you to hit your target in 2021 i know everybody has goals even the one that is unwritten the one that is written one way or the other we all have goals for our business and because we have goals for our business, we need to develop a strategy. We need to develop tactics. We need to develop how to eventually achieve those goals. And that is the essence of this training. This training is actually born out of passion to help small business owners. Because statistics still remains that 80% to 90% of businesses fail within the first five years and the remaining 10 percent actually succeed and then before they mark their 10th birthday five percent of the remaining 10 percent also die off and then only five percent eventually survive but the truth is these statistics do not need to remain the way it is for years if you can do little things about it there are some people that have been running their business for quite a number of years they've broken these orders and they know something or some things that we don't know and they follow some strategic steps that make their business to be profitable over a long time and one of those things is having a consistent flowing of customers or clients into their business because that is the energy in the business they have clients they have customers that keep paying for their products that keep paying for their service at every point in time and that is what the marketing plan really is your marketing plan will give you the overview the holistic view of how you want to bring in customers into your business how many customers you need to break even how many customers you need to break to make profits how many customers do you need to scale your business and that is why you need a roadmap. And, and I said, why do you need a roadmap? Over the week, I guess it's now last week, I have one of my good friends who came to my office and then is a lecturer, he teaches entrepreneurship. And then we started discussing entrepreneurship, we discussed business policy, we discussed marketing strategy and everything that surrounds entrepreneurship. And he, he made a point. He said, what we teach in Nigeria in entrepreneurship class is mainly form of self-employment. It's mainly form of skill acquisition. 
And I look at it and said, wow. So you also understand this process. But your lecturer, you are supposed to, to expand the scope of students. He said, no, that is what the curriculum really based on. That is how the curriculum is structured. That expanding business, growing business goes beyond what they teach in entrepreneurship. Now, I also have the same experience because I believe that there's a wide difference between when someone is a self-employed and when the person is an entrepreneur. When you have a business, maybe you're an electrician, you're a plumber, you are, you have one business, maybe you're a lawyer, you are, you're an accountant, you're a doctor. Yes, you are a professional, but that does not really mean that you're a business person. There's always a business part of every profession. So at that time, you are a, a technician creating job for yourself. So if, if you are a lawyer and you have a law firm, you are the one who goes to the firm, who does practically everything in that firm, you are a self-employed. You have created a job for yourself. You are not an entrepreneur. So as a business owner, you need to ask yourself, am I just a self-employed person or am I an entrepreneur? Because the day you accept that responsibility, knowing fully well that you are just a self-employed person, you have created a job for yourself, you will start thinking of how to grow your business, how to become an entrepreneur. Because an entrepreneur is someone who creates job for other people. That is the real essence of entrepreneurship. You're not just creating job for yourself, you are creating job for other people. So when you create a job, when you create a business, and that business is mainly catering for you, for you alone, you are just self-employed. Perhaps you are just a technician. But when you now expand the business to accommodate other people in your business, especially people that have different profession from what you have, so that you can rub minds together, brainstorm together, come up with an idea, and take the business beyond what you alone can do, then that is when you translate to be an entrepreneur. So the purpose of creating a marketing plan for yourself and your business is to now start thinking of moving your business to a level of being profitable so that you can now move from just being a self-employed who has created a job for himself to become an entrepreneur who also brings other people into the business, not for the business to grow. Because as an entrepreneur, we are the one that will change this world. Always have that, that you are not an entrepreneur by, by chance. You are an entrepreneur by calling, and then you need to fulfill that calling in this world by helping other people to grow in your business. So, and that exactly one of those conversations that I have with every person that I have worked with. And then one of those things that I do with them is, each time we discuss, I, I, I ask them the question, show me your marketing plan. Most of the time, if I ask 10 people to show their marketing plan, hardly will you see one person who has a detailed marketing plan for himself or for his business. And then I wonder why, how do you now make sales? He said, fine, they make sales on when people come, maybe people are passing, they see my business, they, they, they make, I make sales. Maybe I, I, I just go online, do some marketing on my social media or do some posts on my Facebook or my Instagram and I make sales. Fine, all well and good. It is good, but it's not strategic. I remember my, my, my mentor talking recently, I guess we were in, in strategic meeting and he was sharing an idea with the team at that strategic meeting. And he, he, he made mention of an aspect of marketing that surprised me. He said blind marketing. He said a lot of people do what is called blind marketing. That is a marketing that is more or less like blind dating. You are, you are sending information that the people that you don't even know with the expectation, with hope that maybe one of them will need your service. So in, in a given illustration, like you can get a business directory in Nigeria, 
look at all the addresses of those businesses and write each one of those businesses, introducing your business to them. And he called it blind marketing. But he concluded that blind marketing will not take any business far. It only gives you a very fraction of business, if at all. I hold that because I know him to be a very, very frank and reality, uh, reality person. He's a very complete realist. And when he's talking, he wants, he wants you to understand everything that he says. So everybody in the team may not really understand what he was trying to say, but I grab it because I have worked with business owners. And I know that majority of what the business owners do is what it terms as blind marketing. And today, after this training, you will not do what is called blind marketing again because you will you must have created your own step-by-step -step guide on how to move your business forward before i go to that i want to explain the reason why people who has people who have marketing plan and i start to say oh this is not the marketing plan because they don't really understand what marketing plan is. The friend that I asked about his marketing plan about a week ago, and then he showed me the marketing plan. He said, this is not a marketing plan. This is just tactics. This is, market, that is, this is your tactics. This is not your marketing strategy. What I'm asking you is everything. Your marketing strategy, your marketing tactics. So it doesn't really get... Now, let me explain. If you want to build a house, how does it occur? If you want to build a house, is a goal. Building a house is a goal, a goal that you have in mind. I want to build this house. And even when you conceive an idea of building your own personal house, what happens is instantly you have the vision of the kind of house that you want to build. You have the vision of the way the structure will look like, the way the design will look like, and everything that will make it unique. That is the first thing that you have in mind. But... Maybe because you're a lecturer like, just my, like my friend, you don't have anything to do with how to build a house, but you have a goal. Uh, perhaps you have money somewhere. The next thing you are going to do is to call upon a project manager. And you tell your project manager, I want to build a house. The next question your project manager will ask you is, how does he want your building to look like? What he wants from you is an idea of how your building is going to look like, how the structure is going to look like. Now, when you, when you explain how your structure is going to look like for the project manager, now the project manager will now sit down and outline all the stakeholders that will be involved in, in the planning of your building. And then it will bring in an architect, it will bring in a builder, it will build in, bring in a QS and other people that can come up with the plan. So the first thing first is it talks to the architect. The architect, this is the kind of design that I want, especially when you now have a model. So the architect will now build the model, do the design for you, and it brings the design back to you for approval. When you look at design, you say, okay, yeah, this is exactly what I want. Then it talks to the QS to do the quantity survey, the, 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 the estimation of all what is required and the amount that is going to be involved. And immediately when it does that, it brings this to you for approval and all that. Now, all these stages that the project manager goes through to do the, the design and create all the structure that you need to have your goal achieved is what is called strategy that is exactly what you need so a marketing strategy is all the plan that you put together you sit down if you don't have a team you can sit down with your friend you can sit down with your wife if you are running a business alone or you can sit down with other entrepreneurs within you that understand and plan your message, plan your market, plan your media. Look at, okay, this is this is the kind of media I'm going to use. This is all this. I'm going to get to that 
shortly. This is all the, the strategy. Now, when you have all the strategy in place, your tactics is now easy because your tactics now is your implementation. Everything that you do now for, for somebody who is building, the tactics now is no matter what you put on plan, if somebody does not lay block, you cannot achieve your goal. So your tactics now start from going back to your land, doing the mapping, laying the foundation, bringing the medicine, bringing the, the labels, bringing everybody that will start working, bringing the suppliers to supply all the blocks, the, the, the cement that you're going to use. Those are the tactics. So when they start laying the block, those are the tactics, but they are not going to lay block until they see the blueprints. So the blueprint is actually what they are going to be working on. The tactics is execution of those blueprints. Everything that they do from day one till the day the building is completed, those are the tactics. The strategy hardly changed. The structure, because the structure that you have had in mind is always there. But the, the tactics can always be changing based on the information, based on what is going on. Because sometimes you want a very nice building. You may want to use Tarasso, and then at the end of the day, you change it to Taos. That is tactics. So you, you, you will always be flexible in your tactics. But your strategy is a long-term plan for achieving your goal. So the same thing applies in marketing. The reason why I'm trying to break this one down is because so that you understand that when you, when you draw up your marketing strategy, everything that you now do daily to achieve that strategy is your tactics. Your tactics can always change. But if you don't have the marketing strategy, you are going to just be doing anything that comes your way. So it becomes like shining object syndrome. Somebody will tell you it's Facebook that is bringing clients now. You want to try Facebook. Somebody will tell you it is uh, Instagram that is bringing clients now. You want to try Instagram. Somebody will tell you it is email marketing now. You want to try email marketing. Somebody will tell you it is, it is video marketing. You want to try video marketing. You just want to try anything that comes your way because the reason why you do that is because you don't have a structured marketing strategy to achieve your goal. When you know your goal, you know the kind of tactics that you need to employ. So for me, I now create a marketing means. And marketing means now simply means that to have your marketing goal, you need the strategy and the tactics. So when you create the strategy, then you can now create implementation step or process as statics. Because when you do this, it will help you to bring cash into your business. Because if you don't bring cash into your business, your business will die off. Because cash flow and the cash that you have in reserve are the oxygen of any business. And I can tell you with experience, every business that I have ventured into that have had challenges, the challenges came as a result of lack of cash or cash flow in the business. In fact, sometimes... The cash flow is more important than, than profit at the time because you need this cash flow to run your business to become profitable. So your cash and cash flow are the oxygen of your business. So when the oxygen ceases in a business, what happens? The business dies off. That's exactly what marketing plan will do for business. Your marketing plan is invariably the oxygen supplier in your business. Because when you follow your strategy and you bring client to your business and the client buy your product or your service, they will eventually exchange cash with you and then they will supply oxygen into your business. That is the way it is. So now that you know that marketing plan is not just a document, it's a document that will sustain your business because it's the one that will bring cash flow to your business. And that is why I now ask myself this question. So what is exactly this marketing? Marketing is everything that you do in your business. The advertising, the promotion, the publicity, the public relation, the persuasion, the sales. Everything that you do in your business that results into exchanging of money with your product or your service is marketing. Everything. 
So marketing should not be a department in any business. If you, especially when you are when you are when you are a small business, you don't you don't you don't say I have a marketing department because everybody from your business, everybody working your business should be able to say your business from the head to the to the tail must be marketing your business. So marketing shouldn't be a department for a business owner. Now, one of the mistakes that business owners make that I've also made in the past is to copy the big business. You see, if you want to succeed as a business owner, never ever copy this big business. If you want to succeed in your small business, never ever copy what big business or big businesses are doing. Because the objective of a big business is different from the objective of a small business. The objective of a big business might be to satisfy the shareholders. The objective might be to create brand awareness. The objective might be to create publicity or build credibility. Because they have so many ways in which money comes to their business. They have investors' fund. They have shareholders' fund. But as a small business owners, you don't have any kind of such fund. So your main objective is profit-oriented. Your main objective is sales. So everything that you want to do is pointing towards how much sales can I make? And that is why it is important that you have a concrete and workable marketing plan. Because your marketing plan will directly focus on sales. And that is why I always emphasize that the big brand, the big business, do what is I, what I call the brand marketing. Or big businesses do what I call brand marketing. Everything they do in their business is about their brand. People already know the name. So they know that the more people get to know the name, the more business for them. Because they have presence everywhere. Everywhere you go, you may see them. So they, they spend more money on building brand. They spend more money on educating you about the products, about the service that they have. But as a business owner, you don't have such money. So brand marketing should not be your target. And what should be your target? It's called direct marketing. You want to market directly to the people that actually need your product. I remember when we started our microcredit. What we were doing is very simple. We're not building any brand. We're not, we're not doing any flyers. We're not we're moving from association to association. The fish association, the meat association, the mechanic automobile association, we were talking to them. We we're taking our message directly to the people that need our service. We we're taking our market to churches, we we're taking our markets, our our, our our message to mosques, to to schools. Because those are the people that really need our service. We we're doing brand marketing like going to tv station or talking on radio on doing all that but what are we doing we're taking our pro directly to the people that really need it and it really really helps us to start our business and that is what is called direct marketing so as a business owner you must understand that emphasizing and focusing on brand marketing might not be the best route for you at the initial stage even as we're growing because by the time people really know you, you can now start doing some form of brand marketing. But it does not really mean that you should not create some kind of brand that has nothing to do with that sales, but for identification and symbol purpose or story purpose. That is one thing I must understand. So I call the first one and. Is is what everybody understands. Like there are two types of marketing: the 
outbound marketing and inbound marketing. So what is outbound marketing? Everything that you see in the traditional way. Everything, the radio, the TV, the, the, the people you see, those, was, those, those are the things that is called the outbound because even if you put b board around your area of your office, can you really know the number of people that see your b board in a day? If you run ad on radio, can you be so certain the number of people that listen to that radio ad in a day? What about TV ads? I'm sure it's the same thing. Those things are called the outbound marketing. And it's more or less like doing brand marketing for your business. So when you are creating a plan, you want to look at the one that suits you the most. And as a business owner, majority of the business owner that I see, even when I, when I start conversation with them, most of the time, they talk about outbound marketing. I want to go to TV station to run ad. It's because if I have money now, I'll just go to, I don't want to mention any radiation. If I have money now, I'll just go to this radio station and run adverts. Will that really bring sales to you? I guess not. Perhaps it will bring few sales. But why not try new strategy? Why not try new way? Which is called the what? The inbound marketing. Or you merge the two together, like my own ID states. I love bringing the inbound and the outbound marketing together. You can do inbound marketing like direct marketing. It is called direct response marketing. You want direct marketing and you want people to respond instantly. Just like when we, when we went to schools. We we'll go to schools with our presentation and we already, we already have forms. After the presentation, I ask them who wants to join us. We have form here. Our form is... 2500 but if you join now you get the form as 1005 some people will join immediately sometimes we have like 10 to 20 percent of the people that we actually do the presentation for to join our business and that's all so i just look at it okay, if i do for 10 people five people do okay if i do to 1000 people i'll get 100 if i do to 10,000 people i'll get 1000 it is it is it is something that is measurable, and that is what you should be thinking about. That is what your marketing plan will, all, will, will, will be all about. You want something that is measurable. You want something that is result-oriented. And that's why I've taken my time to lay the foundation for you. That is the foundation. And I call that foundation the stage one. Your stage one of any business is to understand this inborn and outbound way. Now... You have, you, you've now understood the inbound and outbound way. Now, the next thing that you need to understand as you're creating your marketing plan is this, what I call the ultimate triangle. I call it the ultimate marketing triangle. There are three important key elements in marketing. The first one is your market. The second one is your message. And the third one is your media and your method. Let me break it down. The market is the people that you want to sell your product to, that you want to offer your service to. The message is your communication approach to the people so that they know that you have the solution to their problem. And the media is the channel that you want to use to reach them. And that is what you need to first of all define in your business. You need this so that you will not use the wrong message for the wrong market using the wrong media or the right message, the right market using the wrong media. It happens everywhere. I've seen a lot of people running adverts on social media. And most of the time when I see those adverts, I just feel like oh, this person has come to this place to waste his money because he is not directing the message to the right market. So the first thing first is, I want to ask you this question and you need to write it down. I need you to get a paper now and start writing things down. The first thing first as a small business owner, is to choose your target market. Who are your target markets? Who are the people that you are really serving as a business owner? 
don't make this mistake of saying that my business serves everybody. Your business cannot serve everybody. Your business can only serve a segment of people, the people that really need your products, the people that really need your service, the people that your service will benefit. Those are the people that your market. Now, first thing first, choose your market. I, I have YouTube channel, and there's this particular video that I, I released about almost two years now. I talk about why businesses fail. Number one reason why businesses fail is choosing the wrong market. I don't know how good your idea is. If you choose to target the wrong people, they will turn a blind eye or blind eyes to your business because you are not giving them what they want. You are not selling what you want to sell. You want to sell what the people want to buy. That is why it is important that you choose your target market. So the question is, who are your target markets? Who are the people that you want to serve? Who are the people that you want to help? As a business owner, our responsibility is to help people. And helping people not for free, but helping people to move from point A to point B, the point where they are and the point where they want to be. And in the process, you charge them for taking them through that route because you are helping them in the process. So who are the people that you want to help? Who are your target markets? Like Sun Tzu says, if you know your enemy and yourself, you need not fear the results of 100 battles because you will continue to win. If you know yourself and not the enemy, for every victory gain, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. That is what happens when you don't understand your target market. When you don't understand your target market, what you are doing for yourself is sometimes you win, sometimes you win. But when you understand your product and you know the people that your product is really meant for, you are more likely to win at every point in time that you go to the market, that you take your, market, your product to the market. You are likely to win because you already know that the people that you are taking the product to really want it. Take, for instance, you have a cure for COVID-19, and you now take that product to isolation center. What happens to your product? Do you want to tell me that people will not buy the product? You have a solution to HIV. You now take that solution to HIV ward at General Hospital, and you give them the opportunity to test it without being paid, and check whether the person will be negative after using your product. And eventually, the person is negative after using your product. What happens to your product? Everybody consume it because you are taking the right product to the right markets. But now imagine if you now take that same product to places where they have tuberculosis. You now have, you take HIV products to a world where they have tuberculosis. Do you think they will buy the product? And that's exactly what a lot of us do. We take a, a product to the wrong market. You create a product and you take it to the wrong market. Or you take a product and take it to general markets. And you feel like anybody that comes there will buy. I have this, this, this slide that I use in the office when we, when we run training. Like when you go, when, when, when you're used to Lagos and maybe you have traveled through a mole before or a long bus, you see people trying to market a product to you inside the bus. And what they do is they try to sell a, well, a particular product for 10 to 15 illness. They'll tell you this product can cure headache, it can cure back pain, it can cure it, it toothache. Can cure HIV, can cure AIDS, can cure almost just because he knows that at least you have one of those images that you can buy. But the truth is, most of the time, few people will buy who don't know anything. Because if you have one product that solves so many products, it solves none perfectly. Yes, it is not efficient for all. But what about if you have a single product? And say this product 
is for back pain alone. And he gives you this an example of what it can do with symptoms and how it has cured it. Somebody who has back pain will say, okay, fine, these are the symptoms that I have. And if this product can cure these symptoms, that means that product is for me. That is what is called knowing your enemy and know yourself. Know the market and know your product. That is what it means. Do you know your product inside out? And do you know your market that you are taking the product to? And that is why when you are writing your marketing plan, you want to first of all ask yourself, who? Who am I serving? Who needs my products? You need to write this thing down. Who needs my products? Everybody cannot be your customer. I am emphasizing that. When you have a product that solves all problems, it solves none, no problem. It solves none of those problems. But if, when you have a product that solves a particular problem, then who can really relate with your message? So the question is, ask yourself, who am I serving? Who are people that the business that I've created, the product that I've created, the service that I've created are really serving? Write them down. And just for example, people always look at it and say, oh, you need to narrow your niche. That's exactly what I mean. Narrow down your niche. I, I call it micro markets. You narrow down your market. For instance, I, I've seen a lot, of, a lot of photographers. And when you ask them what they do, they do wedding photography. They do burial photography. They do wedding photography. They do naming photography. They do newborn photography. They do all kinds of photography. Now, take for instance, if you, if you want to do your own wedding, and somebody you, you, you talk to someone and said, I need a photographer, and say, I, I do what I do, Barry, I do this. And, and you now see another person and said, I specialize in wedding photography. And he starts giving you an instance of all the wedding he has shot and the way to shoot wedding phot photography that is different. And because you know this is just one day event, if you miss the great shots, that means you cannot get that shot forever because you cannot repeat your wedding day. Who do you go to hire? Who are you going to hire between a general photographer or a specialized wedding photographer? I guess if you want to do wedding, you, will, you are going to hire the specialist. And that is what is called target. So who do you serve? Do you, as a photographer, I'm just using this one as an illustration. Are you a wedding photographer or a newborn photographer? If you do newborn photography and somebody who, are, who just give birth ask, what do you do? And say, I do wedding, I do new, I do all this. And another person say, I only do newborn because I know how tedious it is to take a newborn photography. And I know the style to take the photograph of a newborn in different angles with different shots so that the parent will always be happy with the result. That is a target. So start again. Ask yourself, what is my target? What is that micro market that I am focusing on? It doesn't have to be that that is the only thing that you do. Anytime you want to communicate, you want to communicate directly with the people that are related to your product. So ask yourself, who am I serving? Especially when you have a product, this particular product that you have, who is that product meant for? Now, when you now do that, you create a customer avatar. I've always been emphasizing on creating customer avatar. Customer avatar is just is the representation of your ideal customer or ideal client. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a fictional representation. But you have an idea of who your customer really is. So that when you want to tailor your message to them, you will use the idea of the customer avatar that you have to create your message, to, to, to develop your message. I have these friends. I have this friend who has been talking to me about creating customer avatar for his business, for her business rather. And she does tailoring. 
So anytime I explain this one, she said she doesn't need it. So one day I said, okay, fine, let's 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 do some exercise. And I said, let's look at some of the people that have given you job over like six months to one year about. So she said, okay, fine. And then we look at one, two, what does this one want to do? So this one, this, this one, this one, this one. So after compiling all the information, we now look at how many people sew wedding gown, how many people sew party gown, how many people sew naming gown. We discovered that 40 to 45 percent of the people that are giving a job were sewing wedding gown. I now said, Do you know what? Your data supports wedding gown. Why not focus more attention on wedding gown? It does not stop you from doing other things. But people will know that if they want to sew wedding gown, you are the next in line. She now looked at me and said, ah, well, I said, no, now data don't lie. And that is one thing that you must always have. A lot of small business owners don't have data. I have a friend. Actually, it's my mentee. I don't really like to use the word mentee. Most of my people... My mentor, I called him friend. He came to my office one day, and it was this last week, and he was discussing the issue of his business and all that. And I told him, you know what it is? One of the challenges of small business owners in Nigeria is don't even have data. If you go to any restaurants in Nigeria, how many of those restaurants collect your data, like your email address or phone number for a particular thing? I guess none. Maybe perhaps maybe because you want to collect visit in Mr. Biggs or any other restaurants. Perhaps any other restaurants don't even collect your data because they don't care. They don't even know whether you're going to come back or not. And they don't have any process of bringing you back because they don't know. And, and I went inside the office. I brought out some, some art cover and I said, when, we, when we're doing... Bill payment. Bill payment is the smallest business that you can do in Nigeria. They call it POS or something like that. We, 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 we're not doing it again. When we're doing it some years back, when it all started, I said, I collect data of people that come here to pay bills. I look at them and said, yes. I now open the, the, the ad cover. I said, check, see the name, the transaction number, and the email address and the phone number. The one who don't have email, no problem, but they have phone number. Now, actually, I have the database of the people living within the geographical location of my business. And if I start a new business that's relating to that, I can easily send each one of them SMS or perhaps send them WhatsApp to come back to the business. That is the business. In fact, having data in your business is much more better than your table, your chairs, your laptop, and some other things that you have. Because the essence of those things is to accommodate your customer. But when you don't come, what happens? So this is what you do. Ask yourself these questions. Where does my ideal client hang out? What are their greatest fears? What are the biggest frustrations and challenges? What are the goals that they have in mind? What makes them happy? What kind of language that do they use? Ask yourself, ask yourself these questions and answer it one by one. Once you answer them one by one, you will go inside the mind of your client, of your customer. You know exactly how to communicate with them. And that is why I said, I'm going to give us the templates to use for this marketing plan. I'll, 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 I'll give us the link for this template so that you can download and use to create your own marketing plan. It's so important that you have one so that it can help your business grow. So the next stage is immediately when you have the customer avatar, you know your avatar, you know the people that you want to target, then you need to choose your message. And now the good thing is your message is easy when you know the people that you want to talk to. Just imagine me talking about talking to CEOs. Most of the CEOs don't even have time to listen to this. But business owners really need it. That is it. I want to address the business owner. That is my message. And I know business owners, especially in this part of the world, don't even understand creating a simple marketing plan for their business. Now, it's the message, the market, and I have it. 
Now, what is your message? How do you craft your message to suit the people that you want to target? For example, you said you, are, you, 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 are, you run a business, maybe a training, and they said stress management for BC mom. Stress, stress management for career woman. You have defined the people, career woman, and you have defined the message. Someone who is not, who doesn't have any stress, and who is not a career woman, will just pass your message. It's not, it doesn't, it doesn't concern her. But somebody who is a career woman and is undergoing a lot of stress in his, in her business or in her job, we wait and check your message again. Are you? A single mom who wants to start a business now a single mother who wants to start a business will live she is a single mother and she wants to start a business you are not talking to all mothers you're not talking about to all mom you're talking to someone who is single and who wants to start a business like yourself that is message so the first thing first is when you know your your, your target market then you fix your message and it is easier for you. When you fix your message, it makes it easier. Now, how do you fix your message? You fix your message with the offer that you have, the people that you want to give the offer to, and your unique selling point. That is your core message. Because being all things to all people is dangerous. Like I said, maybe you, are, you have a particular training. That is an offer. That is your service. And you said stress management for BC or stress management for career woman. Now, who are you targeting, career woman? What is your offer? Stress management training. That is your USP. It is unique. You are not targeting everybody. You are targeting very simple people, market woman, peradventure in my own case, who wants to get loan. And it does not have any financial background, any financial inclusion. And so the person comes to her own business and we give the person that small loan that he needs. She needs basically women. And in our training, we train entrepreneurs to grow their business. Now, I have a very small agency, very small, very tiny agency. The message for my agency is even from the message for my microcredit. That is how business is run. So you must know the offer that you have, the people that you want to, to give the offer to, and your unique selling points. And that's why I said the who plus the offer plus unique selling point is your message. I want to end this here today so that we can continue in the second part tomorrow. So today we have been able to look at areas where you need to fix before you move your business to the next level in creating your marketing plan. And we talk about the strategy, we talk about the tactics, we talk about you knowing the target market and your message. And today, sit down and try to go through everything that I've said today. And then draw up your target market, draw up your message, create your own avatar. And I'll see you tomorrow for the second part of this training. So this is where I will draw the curtain for the second for the first section of this training today. Then tomorrow we will continue and you will see how you can create your own marketing plan that will eventually help you to grow your business better in this 2021. I really want business owners to eat their target in 2021 because that is the only thing that will give us joy. That is the only thing that will also make us eat our own business eat our own targets, eat our own goals. And then once we are, as we are succeeding, we are also succeeding in our own business. So as a business owner, if you have any challenge in your business in creating a marketing plan, I've said it earlier, I'm going to give us a template for this training so that you can use that template to grow your business. After the other part of the masterclass, I'll share the link to download the template with you and then you can fill the template so that you can create your own 
marketing plan and have a comprehensive roadmap for your business in 2021. Thank you very much for being part of this broadcast. And I'll see you again tomorrow. God bless you. I'll see you at the top.